So I've alluded to this video long enough, I think. It is finally time to start talking about benchmarks between Radeon R7 360 and the Radeon R7 360 overclock. And when I say overclocked, I mean actual software overclocking. So it's the exact same card. We just use AMD Overdrive to overclock it. So before we get too excited, this particular benchmark is going to be for Linux and Linux specifically. In the future, I'll be doing an overclock video for Windows and then a benchmark video pitting the Windows overclock versus the Linux overclock. So let's dive right on in. So this is of course the AMD Asus Radeon R7 360. I actually picked this up, what, July 12th? So it wasn't too long ago. The stock core clock is at 1070 megahertz with the memory at 1625. AMD Overdrive allows you to kick this baby up to 1250 megahertz with the memory at a cool 2000 megahertz. Everything else about my system has stayed the same and I am still using Catalyst 15.7. I did change a couple things in the JavaScript web application. If anybody is interested or wanting me to talk about the application or how I wrote it or what it does, feel free to leave me a comment below and I will consider making a video on it. So let's dive into the benchmarks. Of course, the first benchmarks are GPU specific. It is GPU test using Fermark. Testmark and Julia Floating Point 64. The line chart is pretty straightforward. The yellow color is of course the stock clock and the red color is the overclock. So the R7 360 stock, we get 29 with Fermark, we get 35 with Testmark, and we get 39 with Julia. When we overclock it, we see pretty large gains. We go from 29 to 34, with Testmark 85 to 98, and with Julia we go from 39 to 46. Not too bad. So the next set of tests I call them shader tests, because they specifically test the graphics card's ability to render shaders, which is very memory intensive. The application I used here is called Mad Shaders, and the benchmarks are Marble, Grid of Cylinders, and this one is called Anti-Aliasing Worms. So the curve is a little bit different here, and you can notice just by looking at it, the numbers are way, way closer than this GPU-specific benchmarks. With the stock clock, our R7 360 gets us 81 frames per second with marble, 29 with grid of cylinders, and 16 with worms. And when we overclock it, we of course get 94, 33, and 19. Now the next set of tests I call real world tests because this is testing actual graphics engines. These graphics engines are of course not specifically bound to GPUs, they could be developed in any ways. And in most cases, these 3D engines were built with DirectX in mind. OpenGL was an afterthought. So let's see how they did. The first one is Counter-Strike Source, next is the UniEngine Valley, and then last we have Metro 2033 Redux. So in comparison to the graphics card specific benchmarks, the real world tests I think are really interesting. Counter-Strike, we saw no gains. Regular clock and overclock, you got 60 frames per second. With the Union Engine Valley, you got 31 and 35, so there was a difference. But surprisingly, Metro 33, the overclock actually gave us a lower frame per second. And honestly, that's probably just normal variance. But I think this chart shows you that just because you overclock your graphics cards and you get better numbers on your graphics card specific tests, those gains won't necessarily transfer directly into your actual games. And that is all of the benchmarks. I created this final chart to just kind of take all of the benchmarks and put them into one chart. So from the top left to the bottom right, we have Fermark. We have Testmark, Julia Floating Point 64, Marble, Grid of Cylinders, and Snakes, and then Counter-Strike Source, The Valley Benchmark, and Metro 2033. And this is what the chart looks like. 